C string handling refers to a group of functions implementing operations on strings in the C standard library. Various operations, such as copying, concatenation, tokenization and searching are supported. The only support for strings in the C programming language itself is that the compiler will translate a quoted string constant into a null terminated string, which is stored in static memory. The C standard library, however, provides a large number of commonly used functions designed to manipulate these null terminated strings. Definitions a string is a contiguous sequence of code units terminated by the first zero code. In C, there are two types of strings, string, which is sometimes called byte string which uses the type chars as code units, and wide string which uses the type wchart as code units. A common misconception is that all char arrays are strings, because string literals are converted to arrays during the compilation phase. It is important to remember that a string ends at the first zero code unit. An array or string literal that contains a zero before the last byte therefore contains a string, or possibly several strings, but is not itself a string. Conversely, it is possible to create a char array that is not null terminated and is thus not a string. Char is often used as a small integer when needing to save memory. The term pointer to a string is used in C to describe a pointer to the initial byte of a string. In C, pointers are used to pass strings to functions. Documentation will often use the term string to mean pointer to a string. The term length of a string is used in C to describe the number of bytes preceding the zero byte strlen as a standardized function commonly used to determine the length of a string. A common mistake is to not realize that a string uses one more unit of memory than this length, in order to store the zero that ends the string. Character encodings, each string ends at the first occurrence of the zero code unit of the appropriate kind. Consequently, a byte string can contain non-NUL characters in ASCII or any ASCII extension, but not characters in encoding such as UTF-16. The encodings that can be stored in wide strings are defined by the width of WCHART. In most implementations, WCHART is at least 16 bits, and so all 16 bit encodings, such as UCS2, can be stored. If WCHART is 32 bits, then 32 bit encodings, such as UTF32, can be stored. Variable width encodings can be used in both byte strings and wide strings. String length and offsets are measured in bytes or WCHART, not in characters, which can be confusing to beginning programmers. UTF-8 and Shift-JIS are often used in C byte strings, while UTF-16 is often used in C wide strings when WCHART is 16 bits. Truncating strings with variable length characters using functions like str and cpy can produce invalid sequences at the end of the string. This can be unsafe if the truncated parts are interpreted by code that assumes the inputs is valid. Support for Unicode literals such as char foo, 512, equals i i per mil i per mil i squared i plus or minus i. UTF-8, or WCHART foo, 512 equals lii per mil i per mil i squared i plus or minus i is implementation defined and may require that the source code be in the same encoding some compilers or editors will require entering all non ascii characters as backslash xnn sequences for each byte of utf8 and or backslash unnnn for each word of utf16 overview of functions most of the functions that operate on c strings are declared in the string h header while functions that operate on C wide strings are declared in the WCHARH header. These headers also contain declarations of functions used for handling memory buffers. The name is thus something of a misnomer. Functions declared in string H are extremely popular since, as a part of the C standard library, they are guaranteed to work on any platform which supports C. However, some security issues exist with these functions such as potential buffer overflows when not used carefully and properly, causing the programmers to prefer safer and possibly less portable variants, out of which some popular ones are listed below. Some of these functions also violate const correctness by accepting a const string pointer and returning a non-const pointer within the string. To correct this, 
Some have been separated into two overloaded functions in the C++ version of the standard library. In historical documentation the term character was often used instead of byte for C strings, which leads many to believe that these functions somehow do not work for UTF-8. In fact all lengths are defined as being in bytes and this is true in all implementations, and these functions work as well with UTF-8 as with single byte encodings. The BSD documentation has been fixed to make this clear, but POSIX, Linux, and Windows documentation still uses character in many places where byte, or WCHART is the correct term. Functions for handling memory buffers can process sequences of bytes that include null byte as part of the data. Names of these functions typically start with mem, as opposite to the str prefix. Equals constants and types equals. Equals functions equals. Multibyte functions, state is used by encodings that rely on history such as shift states. This is not needed by UTF-8 or UTF-32. UTF-16 uses them to keep track of surrogate pairs and to hide the fact that it actually is a multi-word encoding. Equals numeric conversions equals, the C standard library contains several functions for numeric conversions. The functions that deal with byte strings are defined in the stdlibh header. The functions that deal with white strings are defined in the wcharh header. The stokshx functions are not const correct since they accept a const string pointer and return a non-const pointer within the string. Also, since the normative amendment 1, a tugs functions are considered subsumed by stokshx functions, for which reason neither C95 nor any later standard provides wide character versions of these functions. Popular extensions. Replacements. Equals strcpy slash strcat equals Despite the well-established need to replace strcat and strcpy with functions that do not allow buffer overflows, no accepted standard has arisen. This is partly due to the mistaken belief by many C programmers that strncat and strncpy have the desired behavior. However, neither function was designed for this, and the behavior and arguments are non-intuitive and often written incorrectly even by expert programmers. As part of its 2004 security development life cycle, Microsoft introduced a family of secure functions, such as strcpys and strcats. These functions were later standardized with some minor changes, and are now part of C11 and ISO IEC WDTR 24731. These functions perform runtime integrity checks of their arguments. If the checks fail, a user specified runtime constraint handler function is called. If the user has not specified such a function, the default behavior is implementation defined. Microsoft C runtime will abort the program when the constraints are violated. Some functions perform destructive operations before calling the runtime constraint handler. For example, strcats sets the destination to the empty string which can make it difficult to recover from error conditions or debug them. These functions attracted considerable criticism because initially they were implemented only on Windows, and at the same time warning messages started to be produced by Microsoft Visual C++, suggesting the programmers to use these functions instead of standard ones. This has been speculated by some to be an attempt by Microsoft to lock developers into its platform. Although open source implementations of these functions are available, these functions are not present in common Unix C libraries. More popular strlcat and strlcpy functions date from 1999 or earlier. They have been criticized on the basis of encouraging the use of C strings and creating more problems than initially trying to solve. Consequently, they have not been included in the GNU C library, although they are implemented in OpenBSD. FreeBSD, NetBSD, Solaris, Mac OS X, and QNX. The lack of GNU-C library support has not stopped various library authors from using it and bundling a replacement, among other SDL, Glib, FFMPEG, RSYNC, and even internally in the Linux kernel. Open source implementations for these functions are available. Equals MEMCPY slash MAMOVE equals 
STRCPY is typically used to copy C strings when the string length is unknown in advance of the copy, but if the length is known then MEMCPY is faster because it doesn't continually look for the will end of string terminator during the copy operation. Also, MEMCPY is faster than MEMOVE, because MEMOVE must handle overlapping memory copying. Though MEMCPY is fast, it can be optimized for slightly faster speed and slightly reduced size for preferred input parameters, such as size is greater than zero, and both pointers aren't null. This is useful in speed-critical code, such as interrupt handler functions. A vast majority of code doesn't check the return value from the MEMCPY function. In many situations, such as using static buffers, the source and destination address is unknown at compile time, so null address checking can be safely removed. Most of the time, one or more bytes are copied. The for and while are pre-test loop operators which require an initial test and branch, whereas do while will move one byte before a post-test is performed at the bottom of the loop, thus executing fewer instructions. The pre-decrement may be slightly faster than post-decrement on some older processor architectures. If the copy size is a known fixed size, the loop can be unrolled to save the loop overhead. In 1983, a loop unrolling concept was created, now known as Duff's device, which copies a power of two amount of bytes per loop cycle. The algorithm can be optimized for 2, 4, 8, 16, 32 bytes. Though the original Duff's device algorithm copies up to 8 bytes per loop, the following optimized example copies 4 bytes per loop. In situations where the source and destination pointers are located on aligned address boundaries, more than one byte can be copied per loop using the processor native memory width, such as 4 bytes per loop in 32-bit processors. Even higher widths are possible on some processors, such as 64 bits or 128 bits per loop. If copying a very large block of memory, a DMA controller can be used to increase the speed. See also, C syntax a radian per second euro strings a euro source code syntax, including backslash escape sequences, string functions, null terminated string. Notes. References. External links, fast MEMCPYNC, multiple C coding examples to target different types of CPU instruction architectures.